Welcome back to another reading and correcting of Stepping Up by me, Tindar of the Tiger Knights. And Ty, the Tiger Super Prison. Today, we are okay, doing Chapter 45. Tips wanted to run into the room and help us to start twisting itself into a knot as any ground. Couldn't wait for this to be done so we could eat. No. You okay? Jekyll asked suddenly in front of him. No. Couldn't shake the feeling he sounded petulant. And the fighter smile. And the fighter's smile said he hadn't imagined. Do you need me to get the loot? He looked around Jekyll and noticed the trap doors to the warrens were broken up. He managed. Although Maz's armor will need to have a to have a few scratches worked out of the leather if he wants to look like he only parades in it. I don't care about how my armor looks, Yorcha replied. I'm a runner, not someone pretending. But next thing, Tibbs. Okay. Next time. Tibbs, you go in there. Those tunnels are way too narrow. Oh well, I guess that's his privilege of being small. Took Jekyll's hand and the fighter hoisted him to his feet. It was strange crossing the room, seeing the result of the fight and knowing he hadn't taken part. It felt like he was a burden. It didn't matter how hungry he was. He should be helping. But when hungry before, he'd lost most of the, he'd lost most fights then. And in the dungeon, if he lost, could it's not it's not a guarantee. It he could die. It didn't help. He didn't want to stand on the sidelines. The opening is here, Kamdar said, indicating the uh, the indicating the hallway wall halfway in the middle of what had been the essence maze the last time. The pedestal with the trigger to shut it off was still at the end. I am afraid Tibbs may need to unlock it. I cannot make out the essence involved. Earth, fire, air, and water, he replied reflexively, their color clear to, in his mind, even if his stomach took most of his attention. Couldn't wait for this to be done with. Can't the dungeon just open it for him? He asked. Sorry, I replied. But even I have limits on how easy I'll make something. <clears throat> you made it. I made it as simple as I could to take into account your condition, Tibbs. In order to voice, you really don't look right. It's okay. I'm not so out of it that I can't deal with moving essence around. I can sense air, you know, said. That's interesting. Driven into a hollow strand. Are the others the same? <clears throat> Are the others the same thing? Yeah, Tibbs said. As Jekyll placed a hand on the wall. Okay, the fighter said, I guess... We ha have to fill the tubes with our essence. Is that safe? I was asked. You guys remember what tends to happen when Tibbs doesn't get a trigger right? This isn't still testing us, Tibbs said. And I have all those essences, so I can handle them by myself. No, Trina said. We each handle ours. Mez, you have to get used to doing this. It's not like I'm ever going to break into a fucking house. Yotra grumbled, stepping closer to the wall. Tibbs moved water within the hollow and washed as the others all were also filled. Air mo moved from an end to the other, never spilling out. Fire was just there, contained within the two, while Earth, Jekyll had trouble keeping the essence limited to inside, grumbled choice words as he focused. Then the door began lowering. When the door began lowering, he stepped back in surprise. Tibbs was surprised too. He'd expected the <coughs> unlock trigger needed the essence to be clinging within the two. Didn't this thing go up last time? I was asked. Tibbs didn't answer. Staring up at the light spilling out of the ever widening gap. It was so bright. A hand covered his eyes. Don't look at it. Trina ordered. But it's beautiful. He whispered in awe. But that's the kind of beauty that's going to claw your eyes out. And you're a woman like that, Trickle said. But this is more like having her jab your eyes with a hot poker. I didn't know light could be so bright. This will not solely be light, Hunter said. This is its essence. This is not something you will ever witness naturally. It leaves me wondering how large the dungeon reserve are to accomplish this. They're big, still said. Just wait until they're, you're older, can you? Hans added. But I can't maintain this indefinitely, Tibbs. I need you to go in. Step forward only for Karen to tighten our hold on him. Is this safe? Jekyll asked. It's got to be safer than fire. Replied. He moved a hand off and stepped into the light. The door 
Grumble? Rumble. Rumbled as it closed behind him, coing his stomach. He looked around, but there was nothing to see. There was, a, for all the light that was in the room, he couldn't even make out the door behind him. Are you back? Still asked. I didn't go anywhere yet. Oh, did I leave the last time? I don't think so, but it happened so quickly. The fire, bur the fire burning you, then the fire went out, and your friends rushed in trying to save you. I was so afraid I didn't pay attention. Chris nodded and extended a hand, feeling for the wall. Once he found it, he sat and waited, holding onto his stomach. Food. There was a time he'd believe food was more precious than the sliver of copper he'd occasionally get. Food meant a diminishing of his stomach's complaint, but also a reawakening of the memory of what going hungry again would be like. As much pleasure as eating had brought him, it was always bittersweet since he had known when the next time would be, or if there would be a next time. At least, once, this was, once he was done with this audience in darkness, he would never have to go hungry again. Chips? Still ask. Still here. How long has it been? Long enough for your friend? Long enough your friends are getting worried. Why wasn't this working? He was among the essence. His stomach was hurting as much as it ever had. The idea he had to wait another two days to have the audience with darkness and he wouldn't be able to eat was distressing. Still... Did Kenny figure out what fire meant when he said that you helping me have the audience with him broke some rules? He still chuckled. He has no idea of anything happening around here. He talks about asking some other helper, older ones, but that means she'd have to leave and, well, I'm glad she hasn't needed to at this point. Tips nodded. It sucked not knowing anything about this or having anyone to ask his questions to who would have a chance of knowing the answer. How long until the audience had it? How long until the guild thought his team had died and sent him the next one? It was longer than for them than for the Omega, since clearing two floors took longer, no matter how overscaled they might be on the, for the first one. But there was a limit. If a second team made it here, would they be dealt with? How would they be dealt with? He didn't remember who was the team after his on the schedule. Was there anyone who left he'd be willing to trust with the secret? Had there even been anyone outside his team who trusted that much? How much time has passed? Some, still replied. All right, time was on something the dungeon had a good understanding of. Maybe you should steal a timepiece a store could learn to keep time? How much longer can we afford to wait? But as I, he pushed himself to his feet. This isn't going to work. You could wait a bit longer. There's no, one wa no other team waiting yet. That means there's still time. He shook his head. If it was going to happen, it would have. Are you sure? He was nodded. The room became so dark, he imagined there were motes of light floating around. Before he could be confused, the door rumbled, and a, a sickly light appeared in the crack. No, not sickly, just normal. After what Tibbs had experienced, normal light looked lacking. And Tibbs, Tickle said on seeing him, What happened? Nothing. He kept walking, heading back the way he'd come. He'd wasted his time. He'd wasted his time. He'd got hungry for nothing. He thought the Spain game for nothing. Tibbs, the boss is in the other direction. The father called. I don't think we're fighting them, I said. We can proceed without... We, we can still proceed, Grimdar said, as Tibbs would remain outside the battle. We're not leaving Tibbs alone, Lena said. Don't be a jackass, she asked. Hey, um... I, I'm Jackal, not Jackass, Jackal replied, offended. He struck his arm around himself, both in an attempt to stop the pain he felt, and because for the first time in a long while, he wished Norma was there to hold him, was here to hold him. The cleric frowned when Tibbs moved away from his touch. I'm fine, he muttered angrily. He wasn't risking the healing or reducing his hunger. Not that he was sure it would work for darkness any more than it had for light. Maybe Carina was right, and only carrot clerics could use this method. All this hunger and nothing to show for it. How had he stood it before? He kept going to the town when his friends turned for the guild table and over the, the loot they found. He bypassed the inn and went directly to his bed, and there he curled in on himself and let the tears fall. I can walk, he grumbled as Carina kept his, her arm around him. The two days had passed in his bed in a miserable blur of sleep and recrimination, trying to figure out why the audience with light hadn't worked. 
His friends have tried to get him to leave it, offering to accompany him to the bazaar, help him train, or just proceed thereon. But Tibbs hadn't wanted any of that. He'd wanted to either die or eat everything he loved. Jekyll tried to raise his spirits by telling them about the Omega he'd watched exit the dungeon, how subdued they'd been compared to how frightful they'd been. They'd, uh, how subdued they'd been compared to how frightful they'd been entering. How frightful on entering. The fights when some of them tried to hold on to the little they found there. It was his best to ignore his friend. He didn't care. The Omegos would survive, had learned a bit of humility. He didn't even care. They had survived. All he cared about was how he was wasting his time. None of the pain he was suffering was for anything. Darkness wouldn't grant him an audience either. And then he'd have to wait far too many days and weeks until his next chance. Are you sure we need to go that far? The glass It's going to put us awfully close to the limit of the guard. The limit and the guards aren't going to be as understanding about us stepping over that over it than they are about Mr. Lightfinger here. It's not my name, Tip Grumble, focusing on putting a foot in front of the other. He had a headache. His stomach hurt even more than it had than it ever had in his life, and his limbs trembled. For the audience to occur, Grumble replied, he must be in the embrace of darkness. There can be no source of light. Even the candle at the windows would ensure darkness stayed away. I traveled for days into the deepest forest I knew of to have my audience. Tibbs will have to contend with being as far from the town as possible. Even the grove of tree was no more. This wasn't there. He didn't leave his girl for this. I'm wasting my time, Tibbs whispered. Don't say that, I replied. Don't figure out what happened for light and find a way for you to get the audience. I'm not going hungry for it, he said. I'm, ever, I'm never, I am never going hungry again. I am going to eat all the time from now on. You're just going to make yourself sick doing that. Because I don't care. Tip snapped. What's the point anyway? Get more essence? Jekyll said. To find out what happens when you get them this time? Serena said soothingly. I should have never taken that shadow. Tips crumbled. No one commented. When they stopped, Tips could barely make out the marker in the sliver of Clario's light. It had grown ever so smaller since the sunset. And soon, she would wink out. Looking back, Tips could e couldn't even make out the town. He didn't know how far they'd walked, too distracted by his thoughts. Here will have to be adequate, the clerk said, to help Tibbs get to his knees. But remember, do not lie to them, they will know it. That wasn't right. Light could see shadow, could see lies. Darkness went after secrets. Show them respect. Then Tibbs was alone. The thought popped into his head that his friends had abandoned him, just like Walter, Kian, Fedora, come on. They'd left him alone to die when they could have helped. The anchor didn't come. He was too hungry, too tired. For as much of time as he'd spent in his bed in the last two days, he wasn't feeling rested. He would die here, alone, attempting something he had been warned couldn't be done. His stomach tightened and he bent over. This was it. He was eating he was eating his insides now. When his friends came back for him, would there be anything there? He should never have done this. He didn't want to die. And this concludes chapter 45 of Stepping Up. If you are enjoying this, please leave a like. If you want to know when the next one's going to be, nah. if you want to know when the next one's going to be, subscribe and hit the bell. If you want to read the story, it is available for free on Royal Road, as is the previous book. If you want to support me, you can do that on my Patreon. It will allow you to read further ahead of the story, as well as have as well as have access to mo to basically everything. Ever. And if you want to watch me stumble my way through these live, it's every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. And with that, I shall wish you a good day.